guys, welcome back to Simply Fajika, a place for budding and aspiring entrepreneurs. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's video. If this is the first time you're stopping by, welcome. Today, guys, I want to take a little bit step back. I've been driving home care, driving home care, but I wanted to have you take a step back and realize, while yes, you're, you're working to achieve your, your dreams, and while yes, you're really trying to get this home care started, you guys will be operating a business and so I want to make sure that I kind of set you up for now that I'm a year into this um, transition to another business after I started my home care I wanted to share with you what are 10 tips that you have to have in order to run a successful business so you should be able to apply this to your home care if home care is not your thing whatever business you have you should be able to apply these to that business if that sounds like something you would love to listen to and i hope it is then stay tuned so the first tip that i have for you is you're gonna have to develop strong systems and processes and guys this is super important because this is going to be the backbone of your organization so we're going to talk about some of these things because I have them embedded in the rest of the tips. And I'm actually going to attach a copy of a leadership circle um, that I found online. This speaks to what are all of those key things, what are those elements that will help you drive your business. And so when you think of systems and processes, how are you going to communicate your vision? How are you going to communicate goals? That's a system. What are your leaders doing? How are they spending their time? That's, that's a system. How are you going to coach the people you onboard? How are you going to pay people for their time, for their work? That's a process. So when you think of system and processes, you have to make sure that all of that is created. Now listen, it won't be created in a day. And a lot of this stuff is going to be in your business plan. A lot of this stuff is going to be in your operational manual. However, you have to make sure that there is a process. If you don't have a process, pretty soon those things will be exposed and they can really come back to bite you. So you really want to make sure that you have strong systems and processes in place. The second tip that I want to discuss with you is making sure you have a strong support system. Guys, I cannot stress this enough. This is some hard work. <laughs> And things are going to happen that you don't agree with. Things are going to ha happen that you don't know how to handle. You've got to have someone around you, a team around you that has your back. Someone who can objectively speak to you and give suggestions to you. Someone you can bounce ideas off of. You need someone that you can trust in order to continue moving forward. It's very hard. I'm not going to say it's not possible, but it's very hard to run a one-man show. So you want to have that strong person in your corner. Someone who isn't afraid to be honest with you, who isn't up front with you, but someone who um, isn't afraid to contribute different ideas. Because remember, you want to make your business the strongest it can be. And sometimes that takes more than one opinion. The third tip that I want to discuss with you, in addition to having a strong support team, you've got to have good hiring practices. You've got to hire a strong team. So we all know when people are interviewing for a job, you know, you hear this commonly referred to is you're meeting their representative. So sometimes people are professional interviewers. They know how to tell you, they know what you're looking for. They know how to answer all the right questions and they're putting their best foot forward. So in order to combat that, you really have to have a strong vetting system, a strong recruiting system, and really, you know, questions that represent your organization. Really those questions should represent what you're looking for to be a part of your organization. And when you look at your already existing team members, what are those traits, what are those characteristics of the people that are successful in your organization today? How can you take that information out and apply that to your interviewing recruiting process? In line with this third tip is make sure you have a strong referral system. I, to me, it's a no-brainer. If I have an excellent team member referring another team member, guess what? Most of the time, 
that person is coming in because I know that birds of a feather do flock together. Um, now, you still put them through that same process. You still put them through the same hiring process. But if they make that through successfully and I have a strong team member willing to vouch for them, for me, that's a no-brainer. So the fourth step that I have for you is remember your why. And another way of saying that is what is your purpose of doing business? And even though, you know, you might want to quickly say, oh, well, I wanted to be my own boss. Well, we're going to dig a little bit deeper than that. What is your purpose? If your purpose is to serve, how does that show up in your everyday life? Because it's easy to get caught up in the, hey, I want to be an entrepreneur. I, I want to live this keyboard life. A lot of more goes into it than just being able to create your own schedule. And so when things get tough, when things get a little hard, you can't throw in the towel because you've got employees counting on you, right? Um, you know, you've got bills, you've got commitments. You want to make sure that you have a strong sense of purpose because that will pull you through um, as you're going through that little lull in your business until you can get to that other side. Because when times are good, they're actually amazing. And that's why we all do what we do. But you want to make sure that's defined so that you can quickly recall, now why do I do this again? Because <laughs> sometimes you will be asking yourself that. Also, your purpose should be strongly tied to your mission. So when you did your business plan, when you decided you were going into business, what was your mission statement? What did you want to achieve? So these are the types of things you want to call on, you want to reach back on um, as you have difficult um, challenges. The fifth tip I have for you is to develop and or identify your leadership style. So a lot of times, and guys, I actually did a video on this last year. Um, I think it was the four types of leadership styles. And so I will make sure that that's a card here at the top and I'll make sure it's also in the description. Um, but you really want to identify what type of leader, what type of leadership style you exude. Now I will say this. I have over 20 years experience and I will tell you that my leadership style has changed throughout the years, but one thing that's constant is I'm definitely a supportive leader. So I am more the leader that, hey, I need you to do this. How can I support you so that you feel comfortable doing what I need you to do? Um, now I have, of course, again, I, I've learned how to flex that style because sometimes people need a little bit more of directive style and so I'm okay with providing that. Um, if it's needed. So one question I love to ask is, especially if you have an A, if you have a rock star, if you have an A plus team member, you want to keep that person on your team. You don't want to let them go. So you really want to understand what type of leadership style do they flourish under. An experienced leader can really flex between what's needed and, um, you know, and stick to what your natural leadership style is. Um, and guys, remember, I always tell people we're never done learning. So if you need to take classes, if you need to take courses, you know, on really defining and polishing what your leadership style is, then I encourage you to do so. The sixth tip that I have for you is developing a strong culture. Now, I will tell you, whenever you have a workplace, there's going to be a structure. There's going to be a culture that develops. Your leadership style helps to dictate that. So how quickly do you address issues? You know, how clear do you communicate to your staff? What does your communication look like? Does your staff feel comfortable talking to you? All of these things help define your culture. And so when you think of the, the best cultures that you've been a part of, when you think about jobs that you really enjoy, how did that, how was that culture achieved? Um, those are some of the things that you want to translate to your business because good working teams, strong teams, they get the work done. And so that's what the goal is, to make sure that you're productive, to make sure that you're profitable, and to make sure you're having a good time doing it. So culture is really important. The seventh tip I have for you is you have to be organized. This is another system that you should really have developed at the beginning. So. How do you file things? What is your filing look, looking like? Um, are you mainly storing things electronically? How will other people access those documents if everything is in your email? These are the types of things. So as you go through audits, you know, as um, people need you to pull up a document, how quick or easy will it be? 
let me ask you a question. Let's say it's an employee file. I need you to pull so-and-so's employee file. How are you going to retrieve that file? You know, so just making sure you have those basic organizational skills down um, so that you can make sure that your organization runs smoothly and that you can easily recall information as you need it, as other people request it. you got to be organized. you got to be organized. The eighth tip that I have for you is absolutely to stay disciplined. This is an area where it does help that you are owning your own business because if you're going to be true to yourself, there are days you just don't want to tackle certain tasks. <laughs> It happens to the best of us and that's okay that's okay for you to one day say I'm not messing with that today however we got to make sure that doesn't go day after day after day and then now we're a week or two weeks late right so it's just making sure that although you have that freedom that you also have that discipline that rigid schedule in place to ensure that all of those tough tasks are either delegated or they're you're taking care of in a timely manner you have to have that discipline and guys this kind of goes back to those leadership styles so there are certain things that some of us just are not good at if you know what those things are then that's where you can lean on your a plus team members this is where you can lean on your leadership staff that you hire on so that you can ensure that someone else is making sure that that task is being taken care of even if you delegate it to someone else, there has to be a check and balance system in place to ensure those tasks are getting done correctly, but also in a timely manner. My tip I have for you guys is to make sure you're having fun. No one, even if you look back, and this is part of the reason why you wanted to leave the workplace, is because no one wants to be a part of an organization that's humdrum, that's head down, all work and no play. And so remember, that spirit for your business is captured within you and so you have to bring charisma to the team you have to bring fun to the team how are you going to celebrate wins if you meet a milestone or if you accomplish something great as a team how do you communicate that what is the reward systems in place for those things so you just want to make sure yes you want to make sure the work gets done but once it gets done what does the celebration look like you know because otherwise What's the incentive for a person to keep producing at a high level for you? These are things that you have to think about. And even for yourself, if you've met a professional goal for yourself, what does that celebration look like? You know, so there is a time for work, but there's also a time to have fun. And you want to make sure that you infuse some type of fun, some type of excitement, some type of reward system into your organization. So the 10th tip I have for you is keep an open mind for additional business ventures. And I say that because you may, I'll use myself as an example. A lot of you know my story. You know that as I was going through the home care uh, licensing process, I really did not see a lot of content for people getting their license in California. Now I did see it in other states. However, we know that the requirements for, for states are different. It really depends on that licensing agency or that governing authority for that state. Um, and so initially my thought in starting my YouTube channel was to be a source of information for other people going through that licensing process. Really quickly though, people started reaching out saying, hey, saw your video, can you help me? I never thought that this was something that it just didn't dawn on me and so next thing you know if you're consulting so but if i only had my mind on only running my home care agency and only producing content then i would have not been able to explore the consulting and all that comes with that and once you kind of get bit by that entrepreneur bug i can say that that's happened to me you want to explore other possibilities you do want to keep um, that line of communication open and and be available to other things that are trying to find you so um, Guys those are my ten tips again. I think I've said this a couple of times You know and I hope it came across in this video that again. I'm having the time of my life I'm loving talking to you guys as you're opening and starting your businesses It is such an honor and it is so thrilling to keep moving forward 
And so my, my goal in all of this is really to help you live that dream life that you inspire, that we all aspire to live. You know, so um, I continue wishing you guys the best of luck as you're creating your businesses. Let's do it. Let's do it together. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please make sure that you like it. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that bell notification so that you're notified um, every time I drop a new video. Guys, that's all I have for you today. Stay blessed.